Surprise Comics. In this video, we're talking about record-breaking sales. That's right, folks, record-breaking sales. Remember when we used to talk about these like every single week? Well, we are back with some really, really strong sales, and man, does it feel good to talk about record-breaking sales. And even though these books are massive books, very special books uh, that are out of reach for most people watching this video, myself included, it's worth watching because there are parallels and trends associated with these books that apply to 10, 20, $20 spec books and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a sec. Furthermore, it's worth looking at these because it's a celebration of these comics. It's important to celebrate these high sales. It's celebrate our hobby, to celebrate the post-secondary market, to celebrate, you know, strength in uh, the comic book communities. And before we hop into it, if you subscribe to the channel, comment on this video and like this video, you're entered to win a free slab. And if you head over to BriceComics.com and sign up for the newsletter over there, you're entered to win a free slab as well. Link down in the description for $15 towards your first purchase on Whatnot when you open a new account. I'm having a lot of fun engaging with the community uh, over on Whatnot. I go live every single week and follow me over on Instagram for trades for grails and fresh content over there. So with that said, let's hop into the computer and take a look at these books. First up, we have Captain America number 117, first appearance of the Falcon and Sam Wilson and the first appearance of Red Wing. Absolute ghost of a book, 9.8 white pages sold for $78,000, crushing the last sale, which was nine years ago, for $4,100. And if you look at the census, this book is an absolute ghost. 12 universal copies, one signature series. If you have the signature series of this book, please send me a picture. I would love to see what that looks like. I hope to God it's signed by Stan Lee. What a collectible that would be, a one of one in that grade, signed by Stan Lee. But um, I, I think that this sale is very interesting in a lot of ways, um, because compared to some other books that we're going to see in this list, um, it just makes for some very interesting observations. Um, but we know that Sam Wilson is coming back as Captain America to lead the next blockbuster Captain America film in Captain America New World Order. And yet this book is still dragging behind some of the, you know, comparable books in this era. And we're going to get to that here in just a sec. Um, one, one such book that I think is an interesting comparison to draw to that is Incredible Hulk number 181 which in the same auction on September 8th sold for a record-breaking $138,000, up $36,000 from the most recent sale prior to that, which was $102,000 also at Heritage Auctions. And the thing that is just fascinating about this to me, I mean, first of all, if we look at the numbers comparison, there's almost 16,000 graded copies of this on the, on the CGC census, 147 total 9.8. Um, you know, compared to 12 total uh, 9.8s uh, in the blue label for Captain America number 117. And yet Hulk 181 absolutely crushed that sale. Way more expensive of a book, even though it is way less rare. And the thing that's interesting to compare about that is the popularity of the two characters. Because the popularity of Wolverine is just magnitudes more than Sam Wilson and the Falcon. So it makes sense in that sense. Um, and when you look at the whole thing combined, I guess this number kind of makes sense to me, 138,000, when you factor in the popularity of the character, right? Because how many Wolverine series and Wolverine comics have come out since the inception of the character versus how many Falcon and, uh, you know, Sam Wilson uh, series have come out since. So when you factor that in, I guess it kind of makes sense. One thing that doesn't make sense to me is that this particular copy broke the record. This is not a good presenting copy. This is a a very weak color strike. The cover appears orange. It's not supposed to look orange. It's supposed to look red. And so I'm just absolutely shocked here. You can see this is the sale that was 102,000 just a few months ago. And this is the sale that broke the record. I mean, this one is just such a deep, dark, you know, red. I don't even think this is a deep red representation of it. I think it's just, just like a, an accurate representation. This isn't even particularly a deep color strike. It's just, this is, is, particularly 
a week of a color strike. So it's interesting to me. It makes me wonder, I mean, you you always hear people talk about by the book, not the grade. Well, that's just not what happens. I mean, this person absolutely bought the grade and not the book because this is not a well presenting copy of this book. So why would it possibly demand such a high premium? And especially considering that, you know, this book does change hands, you know, somewhat often. I mean, this year there's been four sales so far this year and every year four, 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 nine. So it's not like they're without options uh, for this book. If you can just be patient and wait, it makes me wonder if the person who bought it was an investor, not a collector. It's hard to believe that a collector uh, would, you know, be coveting this book for so long and then finally see a 9.8 come up and pull the trigger, even though that it is such a poor presenting copy. But nonetheless, it is a fantastic, very strong sale for this book. It makes me wonder what's going to happen with the rest of the grades. It kind of seems like the 9.8 is in its own realm. You know, like it just didn't really see any pullback at all after it saw this, this flat line here, but it never really saw a pullback with the market correction. Whereas these other copies and these other grades definitely saw pullbacks and then resurgences. Here the 9.0, maybe a little bit of an uptick uh, in September after that sale. Um, here's the 8.0, uh, maybe a little bit of an uptick, but not really when you look at the actual uh, numbers. And here's the 7.5, I mean, right in line with the most recent sales. So it's hard to say what this sale is going to do. Is it going to have trickle down effects for the rest of the grades? Um, only time will tell. Hero for hire number one with a massive all new record breaking sale for a hundred and two thousand dollars just crushing the previous record and what's interesting about this book is it's very similar to the captain america 117 12 universal copies two signature series 14 total 9.8s an absolute ghost in 9.8 because of how difficult it is to get with all of this black on the cover around the spine very difficult to get in high grade and yet this book is still crushed the sale for the captain america 117 so i think one of the interesting things that can be drawn from this is that this book is kind of in FOMO stage, right? People are FOMOing for Luke Cage. It's rumored that he's coming to the MCU. Uh, we know that he already came to the screen in, in the Netflix shows, and that was relatively well received. I think there's a ton of potential for the character of Luke Cage. And I think what this shows is that similar rarity in books, I think what this shows is that anticipation in the comic book spec market sometimes, I don't know if it's often, but sometimes outperforms confirmation. Okay, so anticipation sometimes outperforms confirmation. And I think that maybe what's happening with Luke Cage, Hero for Hire number one, is people are FOMOing for this book, whereas this book, yeah, we already know, you know, Sam Wilson is Captain America. Yeah, we already know he's coming in New World Order, and people just aren't that excited about it, whereas not knowing what's coming next with Luke Cage, the possibilities are so great that people are, are FOMOing for this book. I think that this sale will definitely have trickle-down effects for the other grades. There is definitely a lot of potential for the character. He's such a badass character, such cool storylines, such cool uh, potential for this character. I think that, uh, you know, this book could be one where the actual confirmation helps the values of the book uh, rather than being somewhat of a letdown as we saw with a lot of the Sam Wilson Captain America books. All right, next up is Punch Comics number 12 with a massive $14,400 sale for a 1.5 creamer. Uh, cream page quality. It's a 1.5. It's got writing on the cover. It's missing a bunch of pieces. I mean, it's a 1.5, but uh, this is just a massive, massive sale for a 1.5. Also, just a go of a book here you can see punch comics 12 single digits for every single grade the highest number in any one grade is four so there's four 1.5s there's four 4.5s there's 31 total uh, unrestored copies and that is the message uh, to be drawn from this book is that number one covers sell comics period. Okay. This book is not a key issue. It's just a cool cover. It's a cool cover that is deeply coveted by the pre-code horror, uh, comic collecting community. There's only 31 copies to go around for all of the people that are coveting this book. And that means that anytime it comes up to sell for sale, it's going to crush records. There's just so many people bidding for it, wanting it in their collection. And there's so 
few to go around. And one thing that's interesting about it to drive home the point of cover cell comics is if we look at another cool punch comics issue number 20 just a few issues later uh this is another cool cover right it's got uh, a slightly controversial cover it's got exposed breasts on the ladies here on the cover it's uh, it's also a very collectible punch comics but here you can get a 5.5 for 3800 dollars. that's the asking price from automatic comics i actually just typed in uh punch comics this is the first thing that came up automatic comics is ryan from automatic comics very reputable seller i'm sure this is a great price for this book as well um, but I'm just trying to drive home the point that you can get a 5.5 also cool cover punch comics for $3,800. Uh, but that just doesn't hold a candle to punch comics number 12, even in a 1.5, just smashing that. So the point here is covers sell comics. And the second point is that pre-code horror is on a tear. Pre-code horror is a trend that does not seem to be going anywhere. Smash that subscribe button, hit that notification bell because I hope to collaborate with somebody soon and talk about uh, you know good books to spec on for pre-code horror because there's so many options and it seems like some just totally lead the pack over others. So hit that subscribe button if that's something that appeals to you. Next up, we have a bunch of Tales of Suspense books that had some really high sales. Here you can see it was from the Forbidden Collection. So I, I wondered, some of these tales of suspense, it seemed like, you know, poor timing for some of these, like uh, this first appearance of Hawkeye. I thought, why would they bring this to auction now and miss the whole hype of the Hawkeye show? And then it became clear that it was part of this collection, the Forbidden Collection, that had all of these different tales of suspense and even uh, strange tales books that came to auction, super high grade, awesome little pedigree, not officially recognized by CGC, um, but obviously from a very strong promise collection and so they a lot of them did some really impressive numbers including this sale for the first appearance of Hawkeye and Tales of Suspense 59 which was $20,000 which was almost a hundred percent increase from the previous sale to that which was uh, $12,000 so a really strong sale for this first appearance of Hawk Hawkeye I think if this book would have came to auction a year ago or at the at the peak of the the Hawkeye FOMO I think it would have doubled this I think it probably would have done $40,000 uh, you know not to mention that uh, also this year a 9.8 curator copy came to market and did a hundred and two thousand um, dollars and looking at the census for <laughs> Tales of Suspense number 57 there's only six Six 9.8s in the world, only 11 9.6s. Uh, so again, I think this was just, uh, you know, unfortunate timing for both of these keys. I think we would have been sitting in a very different place had both of these came to market at the peak of the market in like, you know, May of 2021 or something like that. Um, but both incredibly strong sales. Uh, I think $102,000 for a one of six, and not to mention it's the curator copy. Um, it seems like, you know, a safe place to park your money uh, at the very least. This is a book that also did very well. Tales of Suspense, number 45 uh, in a 9.6, also from that Forbidden Collection. And uh, it sold for $23,000, which is a really strong sale, uh, you know, almost 100% increase from the previous sale. It's just a really rare book that doesn't come up that, that much. Uh, first First appearance of Pepper, first appearance of uh, Happy, first appearance of, I believe it's uh, Jack Frost, and um, just an awesome uh, early Iron Man cover. These early Iron Man covers with the different like gold version of Iron Man and the first iterations of the Iron Man armor are always going to be super collectible, uh, super sought after books. So there you have it, folks. Uh, let me know in the comments, what do you think about these sales? Uh, it's great to see strength back in the, in, in the market. Uh, it's great to see record-breaking sales. Uh, I cannot wait until we are out of this slump and just going back up. But in the meantime, there's opportunity everywhere. And that's what this channel is all about, is finding those tips and tricks on how to have this hobby fun itself. Uh, if that's something that interests you, hit that subscribe button. It will enter you to win a free slab. And if you head over to BriceComics.com. You can enter to win a free slab over there. Thank you as always for sticking with me to the end of the video and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bryce Comics.